Hello, and welcome to the next uh, video accompaniment for Chapter 12, Section 1. Um, we're still talking about fundamentals of graphs. In particular, in this video, we're talking about graph isomorphisms. And so that is what is meant by the same graph. How can we tell if one graph is really the same as the other? And what do we even mean by the same graph? Uh, we'll define what it means for graphs to be isomorphic and what a graph isomorphism is. So I'll start this by just drawing um, two different graphs. And we'll just talk about what's what's the same between them and if we should consider them the same graph or not. So I'll uh, define this graph G by just drawing it. It's going to look like this and one other vertex here. And I'll even label these uh, U1, V1, um, W1 x1, y1, and z1. All right, so there's my graph G, and over here I'll draw a graph H. And what I'll call these vertices, how about uh, u2, v2, y2, uh, Z2, X2, and W2. All right, so what I want you to notice here is that we're, in some sense, looking at the same graph. They're not, they're not, te they're not identical graphs. Clearly, we have different drawings of them, and if I wrote out the vertex set, right, G has a different vertex set than H. Vertex set of G is not the same as vertex set of H. And in fact, one isn't even, uh, sorry, H. One isn't even a subset of the other. They have totally different vertex sets. Um, and so therefore, their edge sets as well are totally different. A set of G is not an edge set of H. And there's not, again, there's not even any subset relations between uh, the edge set and the vertex set. So how in the world could we say these are the same graph? And, and in fact, they're not, they're, not the, they're not identical graphs. They are not the same graph. However, the structure of them is the same. So if I say, if I take this graph G and I just draw it a little bit differently. So if I take X1 and Y1 and say, put them above U1, and then I take this vertex W1 and take that out of there and rotate it around. So if I move these vertices around without, uh, and, and just letting the edges come along for the ride without you know manipulating the edges really at all, what I'll get is, uh, so let me draw what that'll look like. Um, so I'll take I'll take U1, I'll put it down here, and I'll take X1 and Y1 and put it put them up here. Again, their edges are just going to come along for the ride. I don't want to break any edges um, or introduce any new edges. And maybe I'll put W1 over here, and then V1 and Z1 will come off like this. So notice now how similar these two graphs are. Again, vertex sets aren't the same, edge sets aren't the same, yet I, I was able to take G and just draw it a little differently to make it look almost exactly the same as H. Um, and so really the only difference between um, G and H now are in what I'm calling the vertices and therefore what the edges are called. In this sense, they, they really are kind of the same graph. They're not identical because they have different vertex sets, uh, but structurally they're very much the same. And so in this case, we say uh, that G is isomorphic to H, that structurally they are the same. So in the next slide, I'll define what, it, what exactly it means for two graphs to be isomorphic and uh, what an isomorphism is. Um, so what is a graph isomorphism? Okay, boo, big long definition here. A graph G is isomorphic to a graph H. So like we saw in the last one, essentially means that we can, we can make it look like the other one by moving around vertices without breaking edges or introducing any new edges. Uh, and maybe their, their labels are different. So we still say two graphs are isomorphic and we write it G uh, as equals with a little squiggly, right? They're, they're not quite equal, but sort of in a sense they are. So G is isomorphic to H. If there exists a bijective function phi from vertex set of G to vertex set of H. So that's 
the first big property of this function. That's what it means for two graphs to be isomorphic is the existence of this function. Now, one, it has to be bijective. Um, and, and, the, and it goes from the vertex set of G to vertex set of H. And two vertices are adjacent in G if and only if the images of those vertices are adjacent in H. So that's if and only if. Uh, one way we can say this is that phi preserves edges and non-edges. Um, and then, so if we can find this bijective function that preserves edges and non-edges, uh, then the two graphs are said to be isomorphic graphs, and the function phi is an isomorphism between the two graphs. So right, so we can identify two graphs are isomorphic, or at least we can suspect they're isomorphic, uh, if we can draw one to look like the other one, and maybe just the labels are different. Um, as long as we don't break any edges or introduce any new ones, they'll be isomorphic. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick an example here uh, just to illustrate this concept. So here's a graph G, and let me label these A, B, C, and D. And here's a graph H. And I'll use a simpler example than the last one. We could do this with uh, the last example as well. And I'll just draw that edge here, and I'll call this, how about, one, two, three, and four. So clearly... Uh, these two graphs, right, if I just take this this vertex 2 and flip it up here, these graphs will look basically exactly the same up to uh, the names for the vertices. So that's, we can strongly suspect that these two graphs are isomorphic, and we would be right. Um, but in order to formally know that these two graphs are isomorphic, we should be able to give this bijective function. Uh, and so let's go ahead and define our bijective function phi from the vertex set of G to the vertex set of H. And we'll just tell you what phi does to each vertex. So let's say phi of A is, let's send this to two. So notice that A over here has degree one and two over here has degree one. And there's no other vertices of degree one in either of these graphs. That means those two must be the same, And right? If I draw two up here, uh, it's clear that A goes with 2, and so I'll send A to vertex 2. And notice now I've done that, that vertex 2 is adjacent to vertex 1 here, and A is adjacent to vertex B here, and that's the only vertex that uh, 2 is adjacent to and that A is adjacent to. And so I better send those, if I want this to preserve edges, I better send uh, B to vertex 1. All right, how about the rest of this? Well, the rest of this we could actually fill out however we want. I could send C to three, I could also send C to four, and this will work out. In general, if two graphs are isomorphic, there might be many different isomorphisms between them, but all we need is the existence of one. Uh, and so phi here, it's clearly bijective, A, B, C, D goes to two, one, three, and four. It's clearly you know, on to and one to one. So this is a bijective function and it preserves uh, edges and non-edges. That is, this condition is satisfied. If, if u and v are adjacent in g, then phi of u and phi of v are adjacent in h. Uh, so let me show you what I mean by that. So a, b is an edge of g. And so I, if I look at phi of a, the edge phi of a, phi of b, that should be an edge in h. Well, let's check. Phi of a is 2, and phi of b is 1, and 2, 1 is an edge in h. And the other way around has to work. So if 3, 4, we know that 3, 4 is an edge of H. So if I look at their um, pre-images in G, so what goes to 3? C goes to 3. So we have to check C and D. C, D is an edge in G. So it has to go both directions. Uh, and what I mean, right, so one way to think of this is that it also... And apart from preserving edges like this, right, if AB is an edge of G, then phi of A, phi of B will be an edge in H. Um, it also preserves non-edges. So if, so for example, AC is not an edge of G. And so if I look at, I don't know what that little line was I just drew there. So if I look at phi of A, phi of C, that would be the pair 2, 3. Uh, and if I look over here in H, 2, 3 is not an edge of H. That's good. 
That's what we want. That's what it means for this to be both directions, for this to be an if and only if, is that it preserves edges and non-edges. Um, and so if we have two isomorphic graphs, we should be able to find this isomorphism between them uh, to, to really make sure. Um, and then if we know two graphs are isomorphic, there's a bunch of consequences of this, right? Uh, so let's take a look at those consequences. All right, what is preserved by an isomorphism, by a graph isomorphism? Now, if you keep taking math classes past this one, you'll see that this idea of isomorphism extends to a lot of different areas of math. What an isomorphism really means is that it's preserving some structural, uh, some, some structure of the object or some structural property of it. And that's what a graph isomorphism is too. But we should be clear of what these structural properties are. Uh, we can at least try. So if two graphs are isomorphic, notice this is one directional. This is just the forward direction uh, implication. So if G and H are isomorphic, then they have to have the same order, right? And that's because the isomorphism between them is bijective. And so they have to have the same order. And since that isomorphism has to preserve edges and non-edges, they have to have the same size. And the degrees of the vertices have to be the same as the degrees of the vertices of H. So it preserves degrees, um, not necessarily of the same named vertex, but if I say uh, take the set of degrees of the vertices of G and the set of degrees of the vertices of H, those should be exactly the same. So it preserves a number of vertices of the same degree, anything uh, like this. So these are all ideas of structural properties of a graph, those that are preserved by graph isomorphisms. Um, now I, I make this point that this is one directional, just because uh, two graphs have the same order, same size, and the same degrees does not mean that they're necessarily isomorphic. In fact, uh, so some, you know, a big project in graph theory is to try and come up with a complete list of structural properties. That is, if, the, if two graphs have all of the same of these properties, then they are isomorphic. Uh, but as of yet, we don't have a complete list of structural properties that are preserved by isomorphisms. Um, so just to illustrate this point, let me draw two graphs that are the same order, they are the same size, they have the same degrees, uh, but they aren't isomorphic. And I'll try and pick out, you know, how do we tell that two graphs aren't isomorphic? Um, usually, if we can identify one of these three things that aren't the same between them, we'll know that they're not isomorphic, right? That's the, the, um, um, the contrapositive of this. If, if they don't have these, then they're not isomorphic. But even if they have these, they might still not be isomorphic. Uh, so let me give you an example of that. Here, my graphs will have order six. Let me finish this edge here. Uh, and let me, let me give names to these. How about U1, V1, W1, X1, Z1, Y1, and then I'll draw another one, another graph here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So they're gonna have the same order. And notice G over here has, uh, what's the size of this graph? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Size of this graph is nine. Let me write those down, order six, size nine. So I'd like to have nine edges over here. So I'll draw my graph like this. This is actually an example of a graph called a complete bipartite graph that we'll get to in section two. And what do I call these? I'll call this U2, V2, W2, and then X2, Y2, and Z2. And this one as well has order six. I'll call this one H. Order six, it has size nine. And let me look at the degrees of all these vertices. So degree three, 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 three. This is three regular. Degree of every vertex is three. And this one as well is three regular. So all the vertices have the same uh, degree. Uh, and that's the shared between the two graphs, G and H. That the set of, set of degrees is the same as the set of degrees in H. Nevertheless, these two graphs, we, we won't be able to uh, pick up vertices and draw G to make it look like H. But how could we 
you know, possibly look at all the different drawings of G to see if they match up with H. That's just kind of, you know, computationally unfeasible. Um, so how can we know if these two graphs are isomorphic or not? Well, the, the key is to identify some structural property that's not the same in either of them. So we could have added to this lift G and H be isomorphic graphs then, blah, blah, blah. We could have said that G and H will have the same number of triangles. So what I mean by a triangle in graph theory is just three vertices that are all adjacent to each other. Notice that G has a couple triangles. U1, V1, and W1 is an example of a triangle in G because U1 is adjacent to V1, V1 is adjacent to W1, and W1 is adjacent to U1. So three vertices that are all adjacent to each other. Here's another triangle in G. Um, so if we count the number of triangles in G, we see there's, there's two triangles in G. How many triangles are there in H? Well, let's try and find three vertices that are all have the same, um, that are all adjacent to each other. So maybe I pick U2. Uh, so I, pigeonhole principle says that if I'm picking three vertices uh, and I sort of divide this into these two sets, so divide my vertex set of H into these two sets, um, the uh, the, these top ones and these bottom ones, that if I want to try and find a triangle, uh, two have to be in the same set. Uh, so maybe these two and then any third one I pick will have to be down here. But all these vertices are pretty much the same. Um, so maybe like that. But notice that if I pick two vertices, in either the top set or the bottom set, which I'll have to do, that there won't be an edge between those two vertices. Notice there's no edge between these two. So that'll always happen, no matter which, either, uh, either the upper or the lower set has two vertices in it, there won't be an edge between them. Hence, there's no triangles here. So for G, there's two triangles, and in H, there are zero triangles. So number of triangles is another structural property of graphs, and these two graphs do not have the same number of triangles. Uh, we could prove that it's a structural property by noting that an isomorphism between graphs has to preserve edges and non-edges. So if I have a triangle over in G, then the image of those vertices in H, the, you know, it would preserve those edges, and so there would be a triangle in H. So this is the idea of a structural property something that's preserved by an isomorphism. So since the number of triangles is different in these two graphs, they cannot be isomorphic. So G is not isomorphic to H in this case, even though they have these three things. So again, there's no complete list of structural properties that if two graphs have those, then they're isomorphic. There's nothing like that. We simply don't have it in graph theory. Uh, there are just too many, I, I like to think that, graphs are kind of just too um, complex or they just have too much going on in them. There's too many um, properties of graphs to be able to get this complete list. Uh, but in general, that sort of inverse problem is hard for isomorphisms, uh, no matter what the structure is. So lastly, I just want to talk about how many non-isomorphic graphs there are, and hopefully this will help you understand uh, isomorphisms a little bit better. Uh, so let me start with just graphs on one vertex. So we'll say order order one and i'm just going to list over here uh types of graphs so and what i mean by types of graphs here are isomorphism classes so there's lots of right if i pick um two isomorphic graphs there's lots of other isomorphisms there and i can sort of all lump these into one category remember it's uh it doesn't matter what i label the vertices so over here i'm going to do unlabeled vertices so if i just have one vertex in my graph how many different ways are there to draw it well, I, there's no edges in it, so it's just the single vertex. It's an empty graph, and in fact, we call this a trivial graph. So there's only one. There's only one graph uh, on one vertex. So I'm going to make a table over here. So so order and number of uh, non-isomorphic graphs. So in some sense, non-isomorphic graphs, I mean here structurally different graphs. How many are there? How many different kinds of graphs are there of a given order? So we already saw uh, with order one, there's only one graph there. There's only one way to do it. How about order two? So I'll have two, two vertices and I can either connect them or not connect them. And so there are two different kinds of graphs of order two. 
oh, maybe if the order is n, there'll be n different kinds of graphs. Let's test that. So let's say n equals 3. How many different graphs can we have with 3? Well, I could have the empty graph on three vertices. I could draw no edges. Uh, let's see, I could put one edge in there. Notice wherever I put that edge, it's going to be isomorphic to any other graph with one edge in it on three vertices. That'll be the same. We'll have an isolated vertice and two vertices of degree one. So there's really one way to put two edges in there. And in fact, there's only one way to put two edges in there as well. And then there's only one way to put three edges in there. And so it looks like there are four. Oh, well, that broke our conjecture. There are four different kinds of graphs, non-isomorphic graphs, on four, uh, on three vertices. Let's do one more. Let's look at four. All right, so again, I'm going to start with the one with no edges, the empty graph. Uh, I'll, I'll put one edge in here. And again, there's only going to be one way to do that. How about two edges, though? How many ways are there to put two edges in here? Well, I could do something like this which results in one isolated vertex, a vertex of degree two and two vertices of degree one, or I could make it a disjoint edge uh, from the other edge. So I could also do something like this. That's an example of a disconnected graph, uh, which is okay. This is still a single graph. That it, graphs don't have to be connected. And so this still has this is size two, just like the last one before it, but you can tell uh, that the, the degrees of the vertices are different between these two graphs, right? They have different uh, different degrees, and so they're different, different. Uh, they're not isomorphic. Turns out that's the only. There's only two ways of putting two edges in there. Any other way I do, it'll be isomorphic to one of those two. How about putting three edges in there? Uh, well, I could put them all off of the same vertex, like that. Um, let's see, how else could I do this? I could do my disjoint edges again and then maybe put one more in like that. And actually, notice that I could have done that differently. And we'll investigate whether it really is different. So I'll put those two edges in there. And what if I drew an edge there instead? Well, notice I could sort of lay this out flat and I can lay this one out flat. And uh, they would look exactly the same, that those would be isomorphic. And in fact, there's only these two ways of putting three edges in there. And there's always only one way of putting all of the edges in there. We call this a, um, oh, well, wait, I should, no, back up. Uh, so that was three edges. How about four edges? Wow, we're really running up the cases here. How about four edges? Well, I could have them all coming off of the same one and then add something like that. Notice I, if I would have added this one down here, that would have been the same. Um, okay, so I also could have, I could have done my like my path thing and then maybe put an edge here. There's four edges that's different from, uh, oh, is it different from this one? No, it's not. Look, I have a triangle with a edge coming off of one vertex. We call that a pendant edge. Um, uh, when when there's a vertex here of degree one incident with that edge. So actually those two are the same, so that didn't work. Um, well, how else could I could I mess with that path? So I'll do my path thing again. Uh, well, what if I connected it up there? That's different than this one because this one doesn't have any triangles in it. So that's certainly different. Is there any other way I could put four edges in there? Turns out there's not. All right, how about five edges? How can I put five edges in here? Turns out there's only one way to do this. So I'll draw an example of such a thing. Looks like this, looks like this guy with an edge. Notice over here in this one, any other edge I add, I'll, I'll end up with something similar. So maybe if I added like this edge here, uh, well, that's, that's really the same as this guy. I could take this vertex and say, move it up here and then they would look uh, identical. So there's really one way to put five edges in there, and there's always only one way to put all of the edges in here. So remember, total number of edges would be order choose two, and here there are six, six edges, um, and that's really the only way. This is the complete graph on four vertices. So, okay, for four, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different ways to do that. It, we can keep going. Five, there's going to be even more possibilities. Um, 
in general, this is a very hard question to answer of how many non-isomorphic graphs are there of a given um, of a of a given order. Um, I might have missed one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I missed one of, of order. Oh, I did. What about just a triangle? All right, there's one more of order four that I missed. With three edges in it, I could have drawn a triangle. So that would go, go with these two. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, we could have had a, just a single triangle. Um, and so like I was saying, this is in general a very hard thing to do is to produce a list of all the non-isomorphic graphs of a given order and to count those. This is not a solved problem. We know generally how fast it grows. Um, however, we don't know the exact number for like large orders. I, you know, of course, we know this up to, you know, uh, given orders, uh, maybe up to like 15, something like that. We know how many non-isomorphic graphs there are, but past that, like 100 vertices, we don't know. We just don't know. There's too many, too many possibilities. Okay, that's it for this video.